spasticity affects patients with cerebral palsy with the classic difficulty with movement, but also a writhing spastic dystonic movement. And you can see it on the left arm here, where the hand will sometimes open and close on its own, but we are focusing on the right side, which does not open on its own. In fact, I have to pry the hand open. There's no active hand opening, the hand is always closed. There's also spasticity in the shoulder girdle, and we will target the medial lateral pectoral nerves to the pec major and minor. We will target the musculocutaneous nerve to brachialis, as well as the radial nerve to brachioradialis. Finally, we will do an ulnar nerve above the elbow. This is because the hand intrinsics are very tight, and we found it really the muscles at the uh, MCPs that were difficult. On the right-hand side, you see the immediate effects of crowder lysis just a few seconds later. A month later. Wow. No tone. No tone. No tone. <laughs> Boring. Boring. <laughs> and now open your hand. Uh, and just, open. You can do it. Yeah. Yes. Do it, do it. There you yes. Go. And close it. And open it. We are now one month after the procedure and you can see that actively she's starting to move her hand, but the big noticeable change is the hand is now opening on its own. We have a hand that can open and close. There is dystonia, but it's moving quite nicely. When we look at the hand with physiotherapy, it's nice and relaxed and opening up something that she has not been able to do before. This is new added in hand function and now we're gonna work on controlling the dystonia for her. Beautiful. So we just thought you'd have a look at the hand because it's open all the time now. Can you close her up a little bit and open it up again? Nice. Excellent. It just, it's open all the time. Crazy. Look, she's doing the queen. Hello. <laughs> a bit of the Pope at the same time. There yes. you go.